Hey spooky people, Megan here. Before we get to today's episode, I want to ask you for a favor. Like many podcasts, we are an independent production and are working hard to grow our audience. If you're enjoying the show, you can help us by taking a few seconds of your time to hit that subscribe or follow button and by leaving us a rating, or if you're feeling really fancy, a review. As always, thanks for listening, and now on to the episode. Does a subscribe to the ideas that there are good places you can go and bad places? Like, is there just a Hitler ghost? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was a journey into our brain. Because if it's me stuck with all these assholes, like, not wearing masks right now, like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not doing that for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paige. And I'm Megan. And this is Spooky Science Sisters. Hello, I'm Paige. And I'm Megan. And this is episode eight of... This is is episode nine. nine. (laughs) 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 Motherfuck. All right. And this is episode nine of Spooky Science Sisters. And this episode, we're doing something a little different. We're going to do a Q&A, get to know the sisters. But before that, we want to follow back up with a, a topic that we covered a couple episodes ago, Skinwalker Ranch. If you've not listened to that episode yet, you may want to skip forward a little bit or go back and listen to the episode before you listen to this one. Yes. And we are coming to you from the distant past right now because um we decided to record a double episode today so this won't actually air for three weeks four weeks three I weeks think I'm, uh, five weeks oh that's crazy I think. I think you're right anyway yeah so we're recording a double episode and yeah like Paige said we're just gonna have some fun and do some spooky Q and A, but yeah, I was able to finally get around to following up on some of the kind of wrap up questions that we had about Skinwalker Ranch, um, and it took me a little bit longer because my friend who works at Los Alamos National Lab, who does like nuclear forensic stuff, she couldn't make any comments um, or answer any of these questions. And it makes sense because they have to be really careful about the information that they're disseminating and it all has to come in like a very official capacity. So unfortunately, she wasn't or didn't uh, provide us any answers. However, I was able to take the time to find a couple papers and a couple other sources and get some answers to the follow-up questions that we had, which were primarily like, how fucking stupid were they being about all of this like supposed radiation that they were measuring on the ranch. <laughs> like I wanted to prove that they were being real idiots. And I'm like not 100% convinced that I did. So you'll have to you'll have to weigh in page when I'm done with this. But okay. So one of the main questions that we had and this was like I think episode 4 and 5, so it's been it's been a little while. I was a little bit lazy about following up on this. <laughs> um But, uh, so, if you remember in the show, they mention that the ranch is in the path of the downwind fallout from the Nevada test site, and fucking Travis um, says that he, like, claims that radiation can cause people to hallucinate or behave unusually. Um, He also, like, keep saying that there's some connection between like microwave radiation and like the ionizing or gamma radiation that would be associated with a nuclear blast and saying that they were both related to one another and that they could like both cause you to feel really weird. And so basically like my question was like, was confirming for myself, like this is not a thing, right? Um, (laughs) (laughs) And I was absolutely correct. (laughs) Those are not things. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So first, nuclear explosions obviously do generate an enormous amount of energy. They generate an enormous amount of thermal energy. They also generate a large amount of radiation in like the visible UV infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So like you see like a big 
flash associated with the explosion that happens. Um, and then they do generate stuff like in other areas of the electromagnetic electromagnetic spectrum. So obviously UV and infrared, we can't normally see. Um, that's not part of visible. And then they generate gamma rays as well as X-rays. And then obviously all of the various radioactive isotopes that are generated and various subatomic particles. So importantly, microwaves are much longer wavelength and uh, lower frequency than the visible light spectrum. And like, especially then gamma rays, which are like on the opposite side of the electromagnetic spectrum. So they're not, yeah, they're not associated. I checked like multiple sources. Microwaves don't come from nuclear blasts, not a thing. And like not associated with nuclear fallout. No. So that was just like absolutely wrong. And it's like, come on, man. Like this is a show where you're like supposed to be a scientist. Like you guys have the capability to go in here and like research stuff and edit stuff for accuracy. No, they just like let stupid shit slide. Anyway. <laughs> so the other thing he said was like, oh, like being exposed to radiation can like make you hallucinate or like make you behave unusually and if that is the case like if you get acute radiation syndrome which is like what people who are like nearby to a nuclear blast or like nearby to some sort of you know nuclear meltdown accident like that like the people whose like skin is peeling off in chernobyl or whatever like Yes, associated with that, you can experience neurological symptoms like headaches and dizziness. But like at that point, you would have much bigger problems because like you <laughs> right. would have been exposed to a very high dose of radiation. So like if they think that they're experiencing acute radiation syndrome because of what's going on at the ranch, Go see a fucking doctor. Stop letting people onto the ranch. Like, get an expert opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, right. <laughs> anyway. I mean, there are people who were, like, pretty near the Chernobyl explosion that, like, didn't have these issues, right? Yeah. Like, so yeah. why would they think that being downwind? Right. Well, and that was what I was going to talk about next <laughs> is, so... <laughs> Good question, Paige. So <laughs> our other question was that, so we we were saying like, okay, you know, it is accurate. They are not lying that they say that they're downwind from the Nevada test site um, and the detonations that happened there during the Manhattan Project. Um, so we said like, okay, well, let's say, let's assume that some of the fallout from that nuclear testing did settle on the ranch. Um, you know, could, could digging like disturb that more? Could there be, you know, could you still be like coming or having problems like from that radiation from those nuclear tests, like they claim that they're, they're seeing and then I kind of followed up, like, you know, couldn't you do some sort of tracing to, like, determine that this was the case? So, um, I mentioned in the Skinwalker Ranch episodes, like, absolutely, people who were much closer to the Nevada test site, um, they're referred to as the downwinders. So, like, they definitely had higher rates of cancer. Like, people got very ill um, because of of the above ground tests that they did. Mm -hmm. But you sort of have to, like, keep this, like, like Skinwalker Ranch is, like, a state away. Like, it's it's on the opposite corner of Utah. And so, like, it absolutely was downwind if you, like, look at prevailing wind patterns. Um, but most nuclear fallout goes away very quickly. So, we talked about, you know, the difference between, like, short-lived versus, like, longer-lived isotopes. So within a couple of hours after a nuclear detonation, 50% of the nuclear fallout has decayed. Like it's, it's, it's gone. Um, within 24 hours, 
80% is gone. There is a portion that's going to last longer than that. There are like these isotopes that are longer. So um, despite the fact that most of it dissipates pretty quickly, um, I was able to read this um, 2002 paper from the Health Physics Journal, um, which is titled Historical Overview of Atmospheric Nuclear Weapons Testing and Estimates of Fallout in the Continental United States. And this is by Harold Beck and Burton Bennett from 2002, again, the Health Physics Society Journal. So they state, and this is a quote, the impact of weapons fallout will continue to be felt for years to come since a contaminant baseline has been imposed on the ambient radiation environment that will be an important factor in the assessment of past and future releases of radioactive materials into the biosphere. So like in geology, when we talk about like using most people when they think radioactive isotopes, you know, they're thinking nuclear stuff, but then they're also familiar with things like carbon dating. So carbon dating uses carbon isotopes to determine the age of, you know, whatever object they're trying to date. So there's excess carbon 14, like just it's pervasive in the environment on earth because it's generated by nuclear blasts. So like because of the testing they did, because of the detonations that have happened, um, there's just like excess carbon-14 and you have to correct for that when you do carbon dating. So like it's very like, yes, (laughs) like nuclear fallout is a thing that like affects us on a day-to-day basis um, right now. And in this case, the isotopes that you'd be looking at are things like um, 137 cesium, which has a half-life of 30.2 years. Um, So half-life for isotopes means how long does it take for half of the radioactive isotope to decay into, you know, some stable version. So if you had a gram of 137 cesium after 30.2 years, you would have half a gram of it. Okay. So the other isotopes are 90 strontium, which has a half-life of 28.8 years. Um, A couple isotopes of plutonium, which actually have half-lives of about a little over 24,000 years. Um, And then that carbon-14 that I mentioned, which has um, a half-life of about 5,700 years. So, importantly, yes, the authors of this paper include maps that show, you know, where were, well, they include maps that were generated from, like, soil testing that was done after the Nevada test site tests happened and after, like, various nuclear detonations happened around the world to look at like where in the continental United States you had fallout associated with it. And like, yes, Skinwalker Ranch is in an area where those soil tests showed that there were elevated levels of some of these longer lived isotopes like 137 cesium. um, And um, I guess isotopes of plutonium were a little bit more common because of the setup of the, 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 bombs that were detonated at the Nevada test site, they were elevated at those sites. But the authors go in and they model um, or they make estimations of like how much would be left. So like, yes, those those half-lives are long enough that we'd expect there to still be some in these areas that had elevated levels. But if you look at their maps of Utah, of where Skinwalker Ranch is located, um, like the cesium levels are, the, you know, they kind of estimate in that area are like essentially nothing anymore. Plutonium might be slightly elevated still to like relative to places that weren't exposed at all to the Nevada test site um, radiation, but not by much. And the their big point was like, even when you consider these more elevated sites, so sites that got a bigger dose of radiation from the testing that happened, um, they conclude, um, and again, this is a quote, 
that current fallout inventories are low and the impact on either present or future external or internal radiation exposure is minimal, except for perhaps 14 carbon. So yeah, there might be, I guess, a little bit car, uh, a little bit of this extra carbon that could be a problem. But in general, like in general, this is no longer a health issue. Like even in the places that got higher doses of radiation. Well, and it sounds like even if even if it is a health concern, it's not something that you're immediately going to start feeling dizzy and hallucinating because of. yes like <laughs> this is like maybe yeah and like the health concerns that are there you know it's not like you're gonna see weird shit and hallucinate and have like immediate response to it it's gonna be like oh like maybe there's a slightly higher chance that a yeah, few like years cancer. from now you get cancer right <laughs> like it's not immediate effects for sure um or acute effects or whatever and again if it is then that means that there's like something much more radioactive on that ranch and like they need to deal with that, which I guess like their solution would be like, oh, it's just fucking aliens. So like (laughs) we can't do anything. Can't explain it. We should just get more people here to research it. Yeah, I guess. And maybe that's the whole conclusion, right? Because he like goes in there thinking like, oh, it's the Nevada test site stuff. But then is like, nope, it's aliens instead. So it's like, <laughs> maybe this is all for not. Like, I'm not even disproving anything. Maybe, if anything, I'm making their case for aliens stronger. But still, like, radiation is nothing to fuck with. Even if you think it's aliens, have some people who know what they're doing come check that shit out. Um, so, yes. And, oh, the last thing was like, if you, yeah, have some people who know what they're doing, come check that shit out. There are tests that can be done, you know, by places like Los Alamos National Laboratory, like Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, like, you know, there are a few other ones where they can do tests to, like, figure out, does your property, does this area have signatures of radiation? Does it have the isotopes present that we would associate with a nuclear blast or like some sort of accidental accidental spill um of radioactive material so get that shit tested (laughs) yeah what i have to say (laughs) maybe that's what they'll do in season two yeah we can only hope (laughs) yeah i'm gonna start a fucking email campaign like you guys (laughs) <laughs> send some soil samples to people who know what the fuck they're doing like if there's actually radiation like what you say there is then then they would show it and like and or like send hair samples there. from your bodies what and also you shouldn't be there and also yeah don't just like <laughs> hang out there like waiting for your skin to melt off like I don't I don't know <laughs> so anyway well thanks for that follow up that was very sciencey, I know, but which is what this is why it took me a little while to to get to it because I had to like I had to do a deep dive into like real literature to get answers <laughs> <laughs> to the questions that I had. But long story short, super science stuff aside, yeah, Travis like, doesn't know what he's talking about. Travis doesn't know what he's talking about. If they are experiencing these things, they need to A, visit a doctor right away, B, get some experts out there, and then lastly, like, yes, there is radiation from nuclear testing that happened in the United States up until, like, I think the 60s, but it's not a health problem. So, chill. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and that was the thing that was an interesting point that they made in this article that i read that was like you know they were like the public hears um like they basically recommended like doing a pr campaign a pr campaign to like make people feel better about this because it's like the public hears like oh there's elevated background levels like of these radioactive isotopes because of this testing but it's like okay but still Like, not enough to hurt you. But, like, obviously people don't want to hear, like, oh, there's plutonium in your soil. Right. (laughs) 
like that just scares people but yeah but like maybe if they understood better you know the science behind it they would be less scared so science is good for you people also wear your fucking mask (laughs) 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 okay so anyway um like i said we're coming to you from the distant past because we decided we're going to record a double episode. Um, and I'm very happy that we just decided like, let's do a fun Q and a episode because it turns out the boogeyman episode was the most depressing episode that we have <laughs> recorded yet. And like maybe the scariest episode that we've recorded yet, because it was like, it's not real, but like the but stories also associated with it are terrifying. Right. I would say, but somehow it's also like the most real thing we've done. Yes. It's I'm oh. I'm afraid to go to sleep tonight. So let's talk about I'm something totally funny. creeped <laughs> out. So let's do fun stuff and try to distract ourselves and hope at the end of this we've we've shaken off our our boogeyman creeps. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go first? Do you want to pick one first? Um no, I want you to go first. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So I don't know. I guess while we're talking about this right now, like what is what's your been your favorite topic or episode so far that we've done? My favorite episode that we've done so far. Mm-hmm. Um I probably should have like written down answers to some of these in advance, but I did not. We just collected them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh I think my favorite episode was ghost hunting equipment but like close i also i really liked doing the first ufo episode as well did we do two ufo episodes well skinwalker ranch was kind oh, of okay i got UFOs you as well yeah yeah what was your favorite um i would say the same thing i think i think the first ghost hunting equipment episode is probably my favorite so far though i'm pretty excited to hear the boogeyman episode i know (laughs) it's gonna be sad though stop (laughs) talking about it Paige. stop talking about it (laughs) we don't talk about the boogeyman (laughs) he's you're only gonna make him real (laughs) we learned about this last episode (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> shut up shut up the boogie man's here uh, <laughs> okay um here's a follow-up question that i thought of while you were asking this what do you think is your favorite thing uh or what what is the thing you're most looking forward to doing an episode about Shoot. i gotta look at the list of ones though. i know i kind of do too <laughs> you, you asked a question neither of us are prepared for what? I wasn't prepared for the last one either. I know we like kind of just talked about this a little bit. Oh, but I know what you're going to say. You, you, you know exactly what I'm going to say. I think I'm excited. Okay. I'm really excited about the sleep paralysis episode. Okay. But mostly because I think it's going to scare the living shit out of me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Although you watched the, um, that documentary, The Nightmare, right? I didn't like it. We turned and, it yeah, off. Yeah, and you guys like didn't think it's that, that it was that scary. And Stephen and I were like, I never want to watch that ever again because I'm so scared that I'm going to have sleep paralysis now. Um, okay. What's so, yours? yes. So I think there are so many that I'm excited for. Um, I'm very excited to do a um salem witches episode because I oh think yes that will be like a fun it'll be like a little bit more history than we normally do so like that'll be f- fun but like we'll definitely include some science in there um and then i think i'm as much as i like got a little bit tired of stupid ufos in skinwalker ranch um i'm pretty excited to do like a crop circles episode yeah i think that'll be fun too those are the things that i'm looking forward to the most but the list is very long (laughs) (laughs) uh okay well now you have to ask another question 
Because I already asked one. <laughs> well, I guess I'll revisit our favorite game of Would You Rather, um, oh because it's both related <laughs> to Aliens and our most recent episode. Um, so <laughs> would you rather be abducted by aliens or be stalked by Freddy Krueger? And by stalked, I actually mean like Freddy Krueger is in your nightmares. I mean, isn't like abducted by aliens the obvious choice here? Like there are plenty of people who think that they've been abducted or like had stories like that, but like they're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I agree. <laughs> and we least... just learned about how Freddy Krueger was inspired by people literally getting scared to death in their sleep by their nightmares. So like, no. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, abducted by aliens is definitely my choice because, like, at least I can still sleep. Yes. I really enjoy my sleep. Yes, yeah, and like you know, as like I said, I think, I think, I don't know. I forget what I said in the UFO episode, but it seems like if the aliens are abducting us, like, I don't think they're trying to hurt anybody. There's got to be something right. else going on there. So. So I don't know. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask the one that I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, we thought of a few of these. Um, would you rather go on a date with Zach Baggins <laughs> from Ghost Adventures <laughs> or <laughs> Dragon <laughs> from Skinwalker Ranch? I want to do this just because I want to know what your answer is. So, as she said, I created this one and I felt like a damn genius when I wrote it, <laughs> but I still don't know that I actually know how to answer it. Oh, Paige. I think I'm probably going on a date with Zach. Yeah. I think. He, he seems like a, the better choice to me. Yeah. Um, Especially like, you know, it's like we talked about episode seven i mean he's like sort of a nut but he's doing the right thing when it comes to coronavirus so yeah i feel know. like dragon he, he's just like, like talk the- down to me the whole time yes like dragon <laughs> no that dude's the worst <laughs> the worst like the answer is not dragon like in pretty much every scenario <laughs> <laughs> unless the answer is like unless the scenario is like who do you want to get abducted by aliens and like it's then dragon, it's dragon. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry dragon you do this to yourself Maybe you're just an asshole for TV, or maybe they edited you that way, but you don't come across great. (laughs) (laughs) It's not great. (laughs) Okay. It's your turn. All right. So uh, as everybody, I think, knows, we're both really big fans of Halloween. So um, what is your favorite Halloween costume? And I'm assuming this means like the fav- your favorite Halloween costume that you've ever had. Yes. Yeah. I think, okay. I think, well, I'll answer this twofold. So when I was a kid, like when I was much younger, I think my favorite was, um, I dressed up like the beanie baby wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> my mom like made me like, <laughs> like a whole like jumpsuit and then like a hood that had like his little Sharpe face. Um, that was probably my favorite. And it was also like the most comfortable Halloween costume. And then um, second was probably in high school, I dressed up like Awen from Lord of the Rings. And yeah. I had her like very fabulous um, white dress with like the big oh, man. bell sleeves and stuff. And yeah, that was. Why have I one. never seen photos of that? I don't even know if any photos exist of it. My mom still has the dress, though, so (laughs) it does not fit me anymore. (laughs) But it was a fucking sweet costume. My mom made that one, too. So that was, like, the great thing about Halloween was my mom was really – well, your mom was really good at sewing as well. So it's like I got pretty awesome costumes. Yeah. I mean, that's really why I think I fell in love with Halloween is because my mom – 
It just always made, every year it was fun because she made me something. Yes. Um, although like what a fucking weirdo am I? I like <laughs> I have some weird ones. I'm gonna ask you your follow-up in a question or in a second. But wait, no. Okay. First, before I say this, what was your favorite Halloween costume? Uh I I also have two answers. So okay. um as a child, and this one just I don't know why it's so funny to me, but my mom um made me a TV costume so like I was a television and I had Rugrats playing on me um, which like is already kind of funny but the best part about it was a parent which I don't remember this but my mom told me that I came home from school because you know you do those like little parades as a kid yeah um, <gasps> those were the best those were I the best that. like why can't we do those as adults <laughs> right we just should just make this a thing like why can't we just have like a during like Everyone dresses up on Halloween, and then we all just, like, go on a little parade around our office. <laughs> we should try it. Um, <laughs> I basically did that last year, so. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we did these – we did this parade, and I went to an elementary school that had three stories, and the TV was so big that I couldn't, like, bend my legs <laughs> – so the principal had to carry me up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so that one is probably like my favorite childhood costume. Okay. Um, but as an adult, I think, I mean, this is a very simple costume for me, but uh, my husband, Elliot, and I did a Beetlejuice and Lydia costume. Oh, and that was for sure your best one. I think that was one of my favorites. So yeah. That's yeah. my answer. I mean, Elliot's – like, your costume was great, but Elliot's costume as Beetlejuice was epic. It was so fun, too. We just bought, like, a black suit and then got, um like, white duct tape and just, like, taped the stripes yeah. on. I so know. We just did his makeup and stuff. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, as an adult, it wasn't really, like, for Halloween. It was for a pre-Halloween – we did, like, a – zombie walk corn maze night or whatever but yeah we did um, oh that makeup was awesome dressed up like zombies so i got to do like zombie makeup for me and zombie makeup for steven and it turned out super awesome and we like dirtied up our clothes and put fake blood on like some old clothes and stuff oh i fucking love halloween <laughs> um <laughs> but i was gonna mention like did as well so your favorite costume from when you were a kid was like sort of a weird one, but I was going to say that I definitely like had some weird ones when I was a kid. Like <laughs> I dressed up like a lily pad one, <laughs> <laughs> like hanging around my neck was just like a large like lily pad. And then I had like a frog hat that I wore. <laughs> and then one year, like I don't, I just, Okay. Um, I really like musicals. You already know that, but listeners do not. Um, but I dressed up like the fucking Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> <laughs> like not the girl from the Phantom of the Opera. I dressed up like the Phantom of the Opera. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That tells you like what a weirdo little kid I was. <laughs> well, I just remembered. I actually think maybe I misspoke. The, okay. the TV was awesome, but the bunny costume. Oh, I thought that's what you were going to say. Because you like, I, did your mom remake that for you or something? Yeah. So as a child, my mom made, and it's not, I mean, obviously it's not like a sexy bunny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like this giant, like oversized, fluffy bunny costume. Mm -hmm. And I, my mom said I like wanted to wear it like several years in a row because I loved it so much. So then when I turned, I think it was like 18 or 17 or 18, we did a band parade and I was like, mom, I need you to make me that bunny costume again. Um, and I wore it again, I think like two or three different times. That costume was awesome. And she got like those like clown shoes and put mm -hmm. little like bunny I've feet on it. I've seen pictures of this. Yeah. We so like everywhere I We walked. should share a picture of your... <laughs> Okay. That's and, yeah. what we should do is ask our parents to find pictures of our Halloween costumes. Embarrassing Halloween costumes when we were kids <laughs> and then share them. Um, there is that cute photo though. So Steven, despite 
being, which we just talked about this. So to jog your memory, if you're two weeks away from this now, um, but my husband was particularly scared by Nightmare on Elm Street when he was a kid. But there's like this very adorable picture of him um, clearly after he had watched it where he's like dressed up like Freddy Krueger. For- <laughs> <laughs> it's adorable. Um, okay. Who asked that question? You asked that question. I did. Okay. So more on podcast theme, I guess. Um, but assuming that, you know, because we're very skeptical, we don't necessarily believe that basically everything that you talk about is real. But assuming that one of them turned out to be real of like the paranormal things that we've talked about or that we will talk about, which one would you want it to be? Like it can be like a bean or a cryptid or a whatever. Like I kind of just want to say like ghosts. Yeah. I mean, that one would be like, I guess the most comforting. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because something then I like, happens after we die. Right. It gives me an answer of like, where do I go? Yeah. That, yeah. In terms of like being comforting, probably ghosts. I think like the other thing, the other thing that would be high on the list is like that there are aliens and that they're visiting our planet. Like as much as I think that's not a thing, I think that would be pretty cool if it that would was be pretty an cool. actual thing. Slash it like, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe that's just my bias knowing that like that's the most possible thing. <laughs> <laughs> or one of the more possible yeah. things. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be cool too. But ghosts would just make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> It'd just be great to have one less thing to worry about. <laughs> 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 but also like, you know, I don't know. I'd, I, I'd still find some way to be anxious about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I know what the requirements are for becoming a ghost? <laughs> Why aren't there more ghosts? Are there more ghosts? And they just show, decide not to reveal themselves? Are there ghosts everywhere? I don't know. What do I do as a ghost? Do I have to stay here as a ghost? Because I don't want to stay here as a ghost. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Like, you know, are these ghosts that are like vengeful ghosts haunting the places where they were murdered? Like, is that just a personal choice? Or can you go anywhere? Is everybody a ghost? (laughs) <laughs> yeah like does this subscribe to the ideas that there are good places you can go and bad places like is there just a hitler ghost i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well uh that was a journey because if our it's brain. me stuck with all these assholes like not wearing masks right now like no <laughs> i'm not doing that for eternity <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sneak that reference in as many times as I can. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So this is another one that I wanted to know. Um, okay. Megan, would you rather be – Stephen, would you rather Stephen be somebody who loves horror movies but hates Halloween or somebody who hates horror movies but loves Halloween? Loves Halloween but hates horror movies. Ooh. I love horror movies, but I love Halloween more. Fair. What would you want? I think I would say the other way around because I think I will love Halloween regardless, but it's hard to love horror movies. It's hard to like enjoy horror movies when you don't have somebody in your life who can enjoy them with you. Yeah, well, you can make friends that enjoy them. Yeah, but what if all my friends hate horror movies? Hmm. Then I'm just. I suppose I'm like already in this situation though, because Stephen is sort of just like (laughs) he's just sort of like a reluctant bystander to all of the Halloween things. Yeah, that's sort of how Elliot is. That's kind of why I feel like (laughs) I'm already halfway there. Yeah, like I'm already like mm, eighty percent of the way to that. (laughs) And it's nice to know that, like, on a date night, I can watch a horror movie. Yes. Yeah, I can be like, let's watch something spooky, and Stephen will always be like, yes. (laughs) <laughs> let's do that <laughs> but for halloween i have you so like i don't need steven see it's fine. we really worked out a system here <laughs> we found each other <laughs> we found each other
Okay. What? Well, I'll do this. What is the spookiest thing that has ever happened to you? Although I feel like that changes on a week to week basis. <laughs> it does sort of. <laughs> I know this is probably the scaredest. Well, I don't know. I've got a couple different things. I think probably one of the like most scared I've ever like the most scared I've ever been was probably uh, during the Jason face mask thing in my window that I talked about in our last episode. But like there was an explanation for that. So yeah, I don't know that I would say that's the spookiest thing. Oh, actually, no, I have, I have, I know what it is. Okay. So um, I think I've probably talked about this before on here, but, uh, and I know you know this Megan, but I loved porcelain dolls. I still think they're beautiful, but you know, most people think they're terrifying. And (laughs) I had a, um, shelf that was I mean pretty darn close to the ceiling like maybe six inches or however tall a porcelain doll is Mm -hmm. from the ceiling so it was you know pretty high up there and I had 15 20 maybe porcelain dolls on there and they creepy enough literally were facing my bed so they were just like staring at me all the time Uh, (laughs) but they had been up there for years like I didn't touch them, which is disgusting. I didn't clean them because I'm <laughs> disgusting. And they, as we covered in the <laughs> last previously, episode, I was disgusting as a child. Was a dirt ball, <laughs> <laughs> and they just sat up there. Nobody touched them. And one night, I or one night sleeping, wake up. One of my porcelain dolls had fallen off the shelf, so I put oh. it back. The next night, two of my porcelain dolls fell off the shelf. But what's weird is that at this point, my room was actually clean. So they hit, must have hit the floor, but they didn't break. Oh. So I don't know what happened. But like I hadn't touched them in years. And they just like randomly started falling off my shelf. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably they just like accumulated enough dust that they like <laughs> started <laughs> tipping over. <laughs> <laughs> Or you just like, I don't know, finally got mice in your room. (laughs) I don't know. I enjoy cleaning now, people. Uh, Yes, Paige is very clean now. (laughs) Which is funny because I think your brother was pretty cleanly clean. (laughs) Clean as like a child. And like, he's not as clean as an adult. (laughs) He thinks he is, but he's, he's not. not. <laughs> um, what do you think the spookiest thing that's ever happened to you is? Um, okay. Well, I can definitely I yeah, this one I sort of thought about in advance. Um, and I'm not clear that I have a great answer. <laughs> I think so like there have definitely been times where I've been like really scared, like gotten into a car accident or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Um but that's not really spooky. Um, the, well, the one is the like where I thought that I was getting abducted by aliens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the story that I told in <laughs> episode three, I think. Um, I was, I was like, I was really freaked out by that. Um, that definitely sticks in my mind. Uh, and then, so this isn't really something that happened. This is just like a dream. That I had that was like, I don't know, it just really stuck with me for some reason. So this is when we were living in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and we had gone to that um, Shaker Cigar Bar in Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. Yes. That place um, is spooky. So, yes. So like if you live, which I'm very excited to like go back someday. Um but if you live in the Milwaukee area, shake your cigar bar and you don't mind cigar smoke. Um, it's a very cool place. Um, they make really good cocktails. Um, but the story is that like the building is also haunted. And I think I'm, I'd have to follow up on this. I like can't remember if I made this up in my head or like if this is actually a thing. But I think they were like fixing up the like apartment area above it to like let people like stay overnight or like they were like they did ghost tours of the whole thing you definitely you told me that before that they were doing something to like have people stay overnight okay okay so yeah so like we went on we did like their little paid to like do their little ghost tour of the building or whatever which was like a little bit cheesy but it was fun 
And then I think I had heard on that that they were like starting to fix it up or they were just like letting people spend the night in the apartment above to try and like catch evidence overnight. So like presumably it might have been like geared more towards like ghost hunters. But one of the nights following this, I had this like very vivid dream that like that we had done this, that like we had stayed in the apartment overnight and like all sorts of like crazy stuff like was happening to us. And then it had like followed us home (laughs) after we (laughs) left. And like, I mean, I, I woke up and just like woke up with like a big, like, (gasps) cause I, you know, I felt like there were people like standing over our bed watching us that had like followed us home that's fucking terrifying from this and like i sat up in bed like because i you know i woke up and was so scared um so yeah so that is like i it was just a dream like it was just you know my subconscious playing with like the fact that we'd done this ghost tour and heard about this thing it was just like it was such a vivid dream that i remember as an adult so so yeah. So for all I know, you know, if I was actually in the way, yeah. <laughs> if I was Zach Bagans, I'd be like, yes, something followed me home. <laughs> That's <laughs> terrifying. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> that place is definitely spooky. It is spooky. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I don't think I would want to spend the night there. So yeah. That's a good question, though. Have you ever spent the night in, like, a hotel or something that was, like, supposed to be haunted? No, but I want to. Yeah. Well, yeah. We got to do some trips. Well, actually, I mean, I guess that's not true. Um, I stayed in the dorms at Kenyon College. Oh. Which is supposed to be, like, one of the most haunted college campuses, like, in the country, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh. Um, and I remember it being like kind of spooky. Like I, I don't really remember what happened, but I remember that that night we had had some kind of weird shit happen and I was rooming with two other girls and we were like really freaked out about something. And then we had read later on that apparently it was supposed like it was supposed to be haunted. I, so I guess I kind of did, um, but nothing like no, no place where they do like a tour, like, oh, let's see if you can stay through the whole night type deal um have you um i feel like i think like in the times that i've traveled with my parents like i think we've stayed in like a couple hotels or places that were like supposedly haunted um but yeah i've never i've never had like any experiences associated with it it's like i've been to places that are supposedly haunted and like you've been to like shakers um yeah yeah we stayed in I stayed in a hotel with my parents in like Flagstaff I think Arizona um and it was like we picked it like because I was like it's supposed to be haunted like that will be fun um (laughs) and I think they were like jacking up their prices like because they had this folklore behind it because it was like kind of a shithole (laughs) um (laughs) but like one of the things that they put on their website was that like ghosts would like loosen and or steal the light bulbs from people's rooms and then we got checked into our room and like in the nightstand the light on the nightstand there was no light bulb <laughs> so my mom was like they, they did that on purpose take them. right like, <laughs> they probably just do that like housekeeping does it to like freak you out so so yeah all right well well i don't know we'll save some Save some questions for if we do another Q&A in the future. But we just wanted to, since Paige won't be able to record in a couple weeks, give you guys something to tide you over until it's time for the next episode, which I'm super excited about. (laughs) (laughs) I need to figure out how to do it before. Well, I know. All right. I guess that wraps up episode nine our get to know the sisters uh tune in next time for our our discussion on randonautica which yes <laughs> i'm still learning about 
the app isn't working <laughs> on my phone, so <laughs> <laughs> we got to do some technical troubleshooting. <laughs> If you liked this episode, hit subscribe and share with a friend. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Spooky SciPod, Facebook at Spooky Science Sisters, and at our website, SpookySciencesisters.com. If you have any questions about previous topics or ideas for future episodes, email us at SpookySciencesisters at gmail.com. As always, thanks for listening and stay spooky. 